you think I'm nervous? You're very nervous. Do I look nervous? Do you reckon that was one of the best grand finals you watched? It's close. Clo it's, it's definitely it's up definitely there. It's definitely up there. Can Reem Campbell get out from? Seriously? I don't know if he can, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so I'm excited. I'm so excited to see him. <laughs> really looking forward to actually play for Lebanon. Yes. That 27 World Cup. Well, I don't know if you brush it. No, I didn't brush ya. Uh, there's a story which I will <laughs> explain now. I, don't think, I don't think I've ever explained this before. Okay. What are the chances of us getting robbed over there? Oh my God. Mate. Do you, do, you, do you remember the sequence of events leading up to this? Yeah. That's the robber! <laughs> and 15, 15 Lemos just instantly jump up at once. Oh. Were you close to the sign for the Bulldogs, true or false? <laughs> That's a curveball. <laughs> when are we going to get a feed now, huh? Let's go. <laughs> do you think I'm nervous? You're very nervous. Do I look nervous? Very. You're nervous, I can tell. Yeah. Folding your legs and that. I'm just comfortable. Well, anyway, thanks for coming on the show, brother. I really thanks, appreciate man. it. You're a, hard man. You're a hard man to get a hold of, eh? Very hard. Well, I know you don't do things for free, so our friends at Shoe Grab, the best <laughs> sneaker store on the planet, <laughs> gave you a little gift, and I know the, the sponsors will be happy with that okay, one. Okay, perfect. You want to unbox it now? I'll, I'll have a look. I'll have a look later. Uh, we'll, hopefully we'll, it's up to your standards. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Hey, how you been? Very good, very good. How you been? I'm good, thanks. It's always good seeing you. That's Talk good. to me about um, how's the, the recovery with the injury going? Yeah, it's all right. Um, I'm about five or six weeks post surgery now, so uh, I've got to see the specialist tomorrow, and then we'll go from there, I guess. But just, just still a bit swollen. It's a bit of annoying, annoying injury. You've had it before, so <laughs> I know all about it. Um, it's a bit of torture, but I'm um, getting through it. So, how many more weeks do you got till you're fully recovered? Um, I think I can do full contact next week, so fully recovered by then. So, but. There's going to be no contact next week. So. <laughs> You'll be doing contact for a while. Yeah, exactly. I don't think you do contact ever in preseason. Nah, I, don't. I try to I stay clear of that. Yeah, nice. And uh, talk to me. How's the family going? Very good. Very good. Everyone's good. Uh, my daughter turned one the other day. Yeah, congratulations. So on stuff. she's almost running around soon and got my hands full at the moment. Yeah, nice. Where were you watching the grand final? Where was I? I was at um I was at a pub nearby, um, just local and. Um, it was a crazy game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You reckon that was one of the best grand finals you watched? It's close. Clo it's, it's definitely it's up definitely there. It's definitely up there, I reckon, too. The last... Um, the, the performance that the seven put on was... It's probably one of the best I've seen from a halfback. I like that. Another seven, you know, wrapping another seven. Oh, <laughs> mate. It was, um, it was just great to watch. Like like you said, I've, I'm, a, I'm a seven as well. And um, seeing how much he just dominated the game in the last, what, 20, 20 minutes mm. and just... In a grand final, the biggest stage mm. to do that was unbelievable. Well, that's what I want to ask you next is like, what about his game you admired the most in that 20 minute period, especially? Just how much he just competed on everything. Yeah. Like, he loses Isaiah Yo. Um, who Romy, else went Jerome. down? Jerome went down, yeah. And then he has Koga come on and then just went to another level. Mm. Like, and I was just, I couldn't believe that 40 20, just from the 40 20, it's just like he went bang, all right, mm. we're on here. Try, try, try. And then for him, I think he, he probably said himself. He probably went the wrong way when he wanted to score. When they scored the yeah, try, yeah. they had too many numbers, and he just he found a way. I feel like the first sixty minutes as well, leading up to that um, awesome twenty minute period, was things were going his way. You know, he missed that tackle oh. on Ezra Mam. He got burned by uh, yeah. Reese Walsh. They were absolutely getting um, hammered by traffic, and then the, I don't know. I feel like as soon as Jerome went off, he had no choice but to step up. Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, weird. I don't know. Just that's just how the game went. But it wasn't that Jerome was faulting his game or hurting mm. his game it's just it's just when jerome went off he just went to an, another level and mm. um a little, little bit more fatigue coming to the game yeah. they had a few more they had a few tries so they were chasing the game little fatigue coming to the game open up a couple of opportunities but I, i've never seen not not on a stage like that no no i agree and how dominant he was, <laughs> it was unbelievable like do you reckon he's Almost in, like you can compare him to Andrew Johns at the moment. Yeah, I think it's a you know what it's a big. I, I know you know I hate to compare. I, I hate to compare. Yeah, just because I mean what Andrew Johns has done his whole career is was unbelievable, mm. and um, maybe later on down the track you can you can compare them. But I, I feel like it's he's twenty six. Like, like, oh, that's scary. Like oh, you know I don't. Sickening. I feel like it's it's not the right place to you know compare them yeah. as as play, maybe later on down the down the track. But he's definitely. <laughs> He's on the right track. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. What about even Ezra, Ezra Mam? I didn't realise yeah. it was that fast off the mark. Yeah, he was um, to burn Edwards as well. <laughs> Edwards is quick. Three so. tries at a grab fight. Yeah, and to do that, he was um, he had a great game. I thought he would have got Clive Churchill if, if they won. Yeah, I, I actually had my um, my bets were on Naif to win the Clive Churchill just because it was so windy that day and I yeah. thought that his kicking game was going to be relied on heaps. And not only that, like, you know they completed at 97%. Did they? 
It's yeah, see, I didn't even notice that side of the game, really. Yeah. Well, that's what you, it makes sense now. But like the fatigue did catch up to the Broncos in the end. And when you think about it and you look at that try that Naif scored, like they were out on their feet, man. Well, you, well, you, look, at, you look at what he they did early in the game. Mm. Early in the game, they didn't come up with many points. They only led, what, eight, six, half. Oh, six, oh, well, eight yeah. until they scored before They were half strangling time. the Broncos that first half as well. And they were all over them. Mm. Like, and the Broncos were just holding on, but they kept turning up, kept turning up in defense. But what that eventually does is doing all that tackling in the first, whatever it was. I think they had at the 30th minute or 25th minute mark, it was like 60%. They had 6% mm. ball or something. Yeah. So um, it was obviously going to catch up on them, and it did. And well, that's what they did. That's what they did. That's what it does. When you build pressure like that and make them tackle, opens up. And when you've got guys like Fisher Harris and Moses Lee. Oh, yeah, it helps. Like, yuck. Thank God we're not in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're too pretty for Oh, 100%. Uh, Stay right. clear of them. Enough of the grand final. Um, obviously, you would have preferred to be there and want it yourself. Yeah. Um, on a personal level this year, um, playing Origin as well, you had a lot of pressure on your, on your shoulders. I think there was a lot of names tossed up when Nathan went down um, during, that, during those games. And... Um, were you pleased? With, like, you must have been pleased with your performance. Yeah, um, obviously would have rathered game two go a bit different, but <laughs> um, you know it is what it is. I mean, us losing Turbo two minutes mm. into the game definitely hurt us, and just had a little bit of a reshuffle there, and um, we just couldn't come back, I guess. And uh, we put in a, we had our opportunities definitely, but um, you know didn't capitalise on our opportunities the first half, and can't do that against a team like that, especially up there. So um, game three was a bit different, a um, few changes and. I thought it was, um, yeah, I think the game just opened up for us and that's it. We had, we had a game plan, you know, we, we had a similar game plan that we wanted to follow in game two. We didn't do that mm. and we lost. Follow the game plan in game three and we win. So um, it's it's no secret, you know, it's um, we did to ourselves in game two, I felt, and mm. um, we followed a game plan in game three and got the job done. What was it like playing up in Queensland? Crazy. Um, was it your first time? Uh, I played in the COVID game, my first game. Um, was COVID, but it was at C bus. Yes. So a bit less crowd, yeah, but um, yeah. it was it was still sold out. But um, yeah, just different. Hostile. Next level, man. Yeah. Hostile. Hostile. It's um, yeah, it's a different environment. But you know, I've <coughs> felt like we started okay and we're, we're in the game. But um, like I said, we didn't really follow the game plan and hurt us. Mm. Give me a couple of reasons why you reckon the season went the way it did for you guys. Like obviously last year, grand finalists on the cusp of winning a grand final and then not making the eight this year. What, what went wrong? Um, oh, the, the joy that we had last year going into the grand final or making the grand final, sorry, um, was our injuries and we didn't have many. Mm. But if we did have any, if we did have some, we had players come in and do a job for us and get us over the line. Yep. We didn't have that luck this year we had a lot of injuries mm. a lot of suspensions a lot of stuff that a lot of the suspension side of it we can control and that's on us that's as players um the players that got suspended they know they know what they did wrong and um we've definitely i hope that we've learned from that going into the next year but um i mean for the amount of weeks that we had suspensions that we can control it um it just wasn't good enough and um you can't really compete with the tops. I mean, you know, you know what? We're one game away, and we probably should have. There's games there during the year where we we probably should have won. We didn't. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think if we can keep our, we didn't have enough players on the field at the right time. Then um, when we did have players come in, we needed to do a better job, and we just didn't do it. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't um, help out in that aspect, I guess, as senior players. It's a shame because I really thought you could. You were the only team that could unravel Penrith mm. on their day. Especially like the second phase footy, you guys really rely on yeah. that power forward game, and you see, we said it this year. You, you really you got the best out of them. And was a golden point. It was gone, but you went to kick golden the, point. Yes, it was goal, golden point. It? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was um, carrying on. Yeah, it? I was carrying on galore. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. But that, you know, we were on three then as well. So we were going into that game. If we lost that game, <laughs> we were going dramas. lose four on the trot. Big there's big dramas. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, well, I mean, it's just. I mean, you, you've played in the games. You know, when, when Parramatta versus Penrith, mm. no matter where you are on the table, it's it's always a hard game. You know what I mean? And um, I think it just brings out the best in both teams whenever we play each other. And um, Do you feel like there's a rivalry there? Yeah, 100%. Do you, do you I mean, feel that? I, mean yeah. I, I played in the juniors there and that's that's just how it is. You know, it's the Battle of the West. Paramount, when I was coming through, it was Parramatta and Penrith had the best juniors. So whenever you'd come up against each other in the juniors... Yeah. It's it's a big game, so um, I feel like that's been brought into first grade, and um, 
yeah, it's a it's a bit different now. You know, we're we're still rebuilding, I guess, as a as a, as a junior club there, as our juniors coming through. But definitely, when I was coming through, was it was definitely rivalry. So um, I guess that's that's where it comes from. Obviously, with a lot of success with the Parramatta Eels in the eighties, especially you know Ray Price, Peter Sterling, and, and so forth. Do you feel like that presence of the old old school players put it puts pressure on you lot? Um, I don't I don't feel like it does at all, to be honest. Um, and it's justified. Yeah. Oh, look, they're, they're they're probably one of the up there with Penrith now. Like, yeah, probably the best team to play in the in our, in our like in history. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, to have a three peat and then Penrith have only just done it now. Um, no one's done it since them. So, it's um they had a quality side, great side, and um, I mean we still we still have you know all those players come away with us when we ever go play in Darwin and things like that, and you know they're always open to to having chats, and they're they're a great bunch of fellas and. Um, I got all the respect in the world for what they did in the game, and um, you know, I was when I first come to Parramatta, I was speaking to Sterlo a fair bit, and he was giving me a fair bit of advice on on my game, and um, I definitely got a lot out of that. And um, he's probably one of the best sevens to play the game, you know, up there with with a few of them. And um, anytime he gives advice, you listen. And you know, there's other players like Brett Kenny and, and players like yeah. that, and uh, they've done so much to the club. So you got to give them the time of day, and uh, we respect everything that they've done for the club and. The, the pathway that they've paid for us. So, do you get the opportunity to rub shoulders with them during the during the year? Like during I caught, the year, I caught yeah. up with Ray Price on the weekend. The Kangaroos reunion. He's he loves a pretty, it. He's yeah, a pretty Price, passionate he, bloke. He loves it. And you know what? That's and that's probably why they were so successful. You know yeah. what I mean? You can see how passionate he is for the jersey, and mm. um, I think he just wants to see that in some in some of the boys in our team. You know what I mean? And he tries to drive that whenever he sees us. He's he's always in your face and getting India, and and it's good. Like you, lo I love to see it. And, yeah, yeah. Um, because I feel like, you know, we got, we got players there. We, we love the club, you know what I mean? And, um, the players that re-signed just shows how much we love the club and why yeah, we want to yeah. stay there. And, and he's, he's probably a, a main reason why, like, and he shows the passion and he loves it. Um, it's good. It's very confronting. I mean, so for some of the new boys that, that, that don't know him or first time they meet him, like he's in your face heavy and <laughs> my, yeah. do your job on the weekend, mate. <laughs> but he loves it. And, um, I love to see that, you know what I mean? So, um, Mate, they're, they're, they're great to the game and, uh, yeah, they're, 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 we definitely catch up with them. Um, they come away on a few away games with us and <laughs> no, that. So, mm. Can Reen Campbell get out for him? Seriously? I don't know if he can and I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so I'm excited. I'm so excited to see him. <laughs> Listen, Judy Pollard, I get, like, you know, oh. I've seen him throw him, but I, I don't know about Reed. I, I can't wait to see it. When I is they, it next week? I, I think so. I don't, do you know how, it came that, how that came about? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. He just. I, I remember. Know, I, I remember him just saying to me, he goes, oh, I think they, they they've messaged me and they want me, want me to fight." And I said, "Good said, on him." I said, "You're not fighting, are you?" He goes, "Oh yeah, I might do it." <laughs> You're like, yeah, <laughs> like I got because you couldn't. I'm not speaking of you, but like for me, you, you couldn't pay me enough. Yeah, yeah. I don't like, know. I, I listen. To get I, got the ring. I got so much respect for the guys that step in the ring. Oh, 100%. Unbelievable. But. Yeah, no, nah, I just don't. No, nah, I, nah, I can't wait. I love Reg. <laughs> like, I, I love him. He's man, always into like, each other, Oh, he? I love him, man. He's the best. But I can't wait to see him in there. Oh, how good. I dude. hope you can throw him. But, oh, me and you both. He's just tough, you know what I mean? He won't stop. You know what he's, he's like. He's pretty big. He's got a good reach on him, I Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if he's got a glass jaw or not, but we'll wait and see. If well, we he has. Knock it's, 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 it's been broken a couple of he's times. He's a forward. He's yeah. a forward. Okay. He's a forward. We'll see. He'll be all right. We'll see what happens. Oof, uh, so sorry, we're gonna <laughs> talk at a next topic. Obviously, the World Cup. Um, oh man, for me personally, that was one of the best experiences ever. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you got to experience two World Cups, 2017, yeah. and obviously last year. Um, which one stands out the most for yourself? Um, 2017 was pretty big, man. Just um, obviously being in Australia. Obviously yeah. being in Australia, I think that was just the difference, and um, <clears throat> the, I didn't expect too much out of it. Mm. So I went into it like, okay, I'm gonna play. Um, Freddie was the coach and I was like, okay, yeah, sweet. We've got something here. And then, cause we, I'd never played for Lebanon before that. So mm -hmm. I didn't know anything, what it was like or, and, um, just to see, I got so much out of playing for them. Well, like it was, it wasn't funny. Like mm -hmm. I, know I took it back to club land, but to see how much it meant to all the boys that, that, you know, work trades during the week and then come and, you know, represent Lebanon and see how much it means to them. And, you know, the, the hard work that they put in before that to, for us to play in that world cup. Yeah. Um, I got so much out of that, and um, but yeah, it's probably 2017 is a bit different. But you know, then I learned a lot coming into when was it last year? Mm. 22. Oh, it's gone that fast, though. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, under Checker, I learned so much of him. I still stay in contact with him now and um, get advice on him and on different parts of 
you know, footy life, everything like that. And um, I was lucky enough to captain the side and I got a lot out of that, mate. There's, um, and it was a bit of a younger side now. So compared to, yeah, to yeah compared to 2017. So um, any knowledge that, you know, I had on the game, I was, I was happy to, you know, pass it on to the younger, younger players and you were probably the same, but um, I feel like, you know, I got a lot out of it's, it's in different ways. I got a lot out of both camps. At 2017, I was actually um, behind the scenes. I was, you know, really looking forward to actually play for Lebanon. Yes. At 2017 World Cup. And then know, you brushed it. No, I didn't brush you. Uh, there's a story which I will <laughs> explain now. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever explained this before, okay. but I will explain it. So 2016, uh, Ivan got sacked from Panthers. So I think he didn't have a job at that moment in time. And I asked him if he wanted to coach Lebanon. Uh, we ended up having yeah, a, that's right. We had um we had, we had a couple first. of things with him before, yeah. Yeah, so we um I actually had dinner with him at Sahara in Burwood upstairs and a couple of other um Sahara uh, Burwood, yes. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a chat there and uh, he signed on the dollar and he was um obviously the head coach and then uh, I think a few months later he got the opportunity to coach Tigers. So obviously put his uh, yes. full time and effort into that, which is no problem. Uh, after that, I kind of took a back back step. Um, ended up getting selected for the Aussie side for the Four Nations, mm. right? So going into 2017, um, I, I wasn't really thinking too far ahead about the World Cup. Um, obviously, I just wanted to focus about getting back from injury from my ACL first yeah. and then uh, continuing my form from there. Uh, towards the end of the year, uh, anyway, the selections come out. I was getting calls from, obviously, <laughs> Lebanon. I, was, I, got, I got called from Mal as well, asking if I wanted to come in, join camp again. And uh, so I picked, obviously, I elected to play for Australia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But with that... Um, I was public enemy number one. It's oh, number one. Do you remember that game? Oh, yeah. I was probably one of the most angriest per, like people on that in that stadium, man. I, I was, bet. I was so off it. I was off it. Well, oh. if it, do you want do you want to tell everyone what that what the the no, you can you, you can tell it. I don't want to talk about it, actually. You can tell it. Yeah, you can't mention it. <laughs> so, what was it? I think every can, time can I say something, but were you guys like previewing me? Like, did did you do something? No. Like me? Oh, good. Okay. But all the boys, it they felt were like coming that. at you. Yeah, everyone was coming at me. Yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, yeah. stadium was Oh, mate, on the whole stadium. Me. I've actually never heard a louder roar at <laughs> Allianz than that night. And the chant was, a man saws a cullub. <laughs> Can you explain? Which is, a cullub means dog in Lebanese, in Arabic. Uh, I was burning. And that was nonstop. Every time you touched the ball, it was just that around the whole game. And like, I, I get it. Like, I totally get it. But in my defense, like, I played for the Kangaroos in 2016. You know like, what? It's just... It's just, it had to happen. That's just, it didn't have to happen, Mate, sorry. It was a powder keg, that's that. But it's just, it happened. I'm not getting any sympathy right now from you. But, but, um, but <laughs> I did tell you how much you were going to love playing in the 22 World Cup before. Yeah. And how much you would have got out of it. And um, I played in 09. So I got, yes, the, I got my right. first taste of like Lebanon Foot Rugby League yeah. back then. And that was one of the most mem memorable tours I've ever been a mm. part of. Um, it's, there's no greater feeling to represent your heritage. Yeah. Um, we both know that now. Uh, and obviously, obviously in 2022 to have the opportunity again, like it was, yeah, like for me, that, that really hit deep. That was one of the yeah. most special tours as well. And to be a to, part of. I mean, the next World Cup is is in Australia again. Mm. And mate, uh, that compared to 2017 World Cup where we were in the World Cup, but like we weren't expected to really do anything. We won, played the first semi, should have. We had Tonga beat, but we'll, we'll leave that. We a couple of refereeing decisions, <laughs> um, but like we went went toe to toe with Tonga, who I were remember. you know up there with one of the favourites of the comp, and mm. um, to see the support that we had from that, and then I mean the how good the fans were, in, the Tongan fans were cheering for us as well. That's like what? in that game over there, yeah. It was just like I think no one realised what we could do as a country and. I think I, I felt the same there over yeah. in England. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, we had we had a big supporter base over there, and um, I think this world, this world, next World Cup is going to be massive, man. I think the supporters that what is it twenty twenty five or twenty four? Yeah, I'm not sure. You're gonna hang it? on. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, bro. I would love to. But man, I'm telling like this next World Cup. I'm like it'll be it'll be stupid. It'll be the fans, the Lebanese fans. Will be unbelievable, I reckon. Put it this way: if I'm not playing, I'll be part of the staff. 100, percent you will. <laughs> we'll make up some role, culture manager or something. <laughs> oh god! Oh. Uh, how about like just what are the chances of us getting robbed over there? Oh my god, mate! Do, do you do you remember the sequence of events leading up to this? Yeah, because we weren't we were at dinner. Yes. No, no, no were we? 
No, I'm not talking about the night where the guy rocked up. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm talking, yes. I rewind it back a couple of nights before. Okay, so we woke up. Uh, this is what I, how I remember it. We wake up Friday morning. Oh, I woke up Friday morning. And I went downstairs to go to the team room to grab a bottle of water. I open the door and I see Cheka, Robbie, all the coaching staff huddled in a circle. And I'm like, oh, I'm having a, meet, a pretty important meeting. So I go, oh, boys, I'll come back later. I'm like, oh, no, come in, come in. I've walked in. I'm looking around. There's nothing, there's nothing in the team Yeah, they room. came in and stole the I'm GPSs like, and... Like, I'm like, what? And the jerseys. Where's all our stuff? We're, like, mm. we're trying to figure out the same thing. I was like, did we get robbed? It's like, looks that way. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then anyway, I'm like, I'll, I'll go ask the boys if they know anything. I got back onto the WhatsApp straight on the thread. I'm like, boys, you wouldn't believe it. We, <laughs> we've been robbed. Anyone know anything? And then you, 15 minutes later, got that message from- uh, No, no, no. So, hap- oh, yes. Yes, I did. I did. From Corey Patterson, <laughs> yeah. who I used to play with um, at the Tigers. No, it's random. It was random as, man. I haven't spoke to him in probably- since he left the Tigers, I reckon. What's he that? Messaged, How he many years is that? Since seven, 16, oh, 2016, wow, 2015. So I haven't spoke to him since then. I get a random message from him in the morning straight away going, hey, mate, um, hey, mate, uh, there's been a bag of yours uh, found, Lebanese full of jerseys and GPSs at a job site, at a, at a construction site down the road. <laughs> uh, my mate's picked it up. He's just It's just been dropped there. So whoever's stolen it has realised that there's just jerseys and stuff and just dumped it at a, at a construction site. Literally, did he know how expensive those jerseys were? Oh, so how rare! He got. Oh, the bike had no <laughs> idea. He's probably wrong, robbed the wrong people. So I've found that we've got that. So we got all our stuff back straight away, pretty much. Didn't then, we, no, there wasn't. It wasn't all of it. Uh, I was most of it. We did get the GPS. Back. No, because that was a bit of money. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. expensive thing, but. Uh, if we didn't get those jerseys back, I don't think we had nothing to play we in that nothing. weekend. We had nothing. And that was two days out from yeah. that game against yeah, yeah, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had nothing. And then, if you want to tell the story, what was it? Two, <laughs> two nights, nights later or cap- something? Uh, just after the captain's run, I think yeah. it was. So the night before the game. We went out for dinner. Um, we went out to dinner. Um, but didn't we? No, we came back. We came back. Yeah, it, but we it, weren't. It was, we, uh, we came back to the hotel. And then I think I had massage. I think I had massage and I think a few of the boys oh, yeah, were playing chairs right. and we're hanging out in the team room, stretching, <laughs> whatnot. Uh, I think it was me and Layoon on the massage table. Anyway, I, I finished a bit earlier. I went upstairs to go um, wash all the oil off. And then I come back down and everyone's in hysterics and there's this poor bloke off his chops. Yeah. And I was like, what's going on? Like, what? And apparently he rocked into, walked into the team room. Everyone just looked at this bloke and he, he just bolted for the exit. Yeah. And then someone just goes... That's the robber. <laughs> and 15, 15 Lemos just instantly jump up at once. Oh. Chase this guy down Dean's Gate. If anyone knows what Dean's Gate is, it's like the modern day King's Cross. Yeah. It's not modern day, like previous King's Cross, but it was absolutely wild. It's like the Wild West. 400 meters, get this guy, and then escort him back. Uh, like he got off the massage table, yeah, laying, glistening yep. Some in of the boys oil. had, had just, un- just budgies on. Just budgies on, freezing cold, England, and they're sprinting down <laughs> trying to grab this bloke. <laughs> Oh god! Anyway, uh, we bring it back. Um, the guys obviously he was on something at the time, and then he goes to me. He goes to the oh, bathroom. I didn't go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, I go to the bathroom, and then I don't think he's not going to go anywhere. Little did I know, he's trying to get through the ceiling. He's, <laughs> I'm hearing some. What the hell's going on in there? We break the door open. He's trying to go through the ceiling, but little did he know, it's a concrete slab. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh. we tackled him. Cops came. Anyway, that's the story. Good times, good times. Oh, mate, what a laugh that what was. A laugh. What about the last night in Leeds as well? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a story for another day. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's move on, yeah. let's move on. Off the back of the World Cup, obviously we had a lot of characters to that team. Who do you reckon was the most undercover but impressed you the most? In what way? Like undercover? Oh, like just funny, like out there. Any, any particular for – little, for me, Khalil Rami – Oh my god, he was a he was a psycho. Mate, we had a fair few. Yeah, we had I, a think, few. Oh, no. I think everyone was just different in their own way. Like Adam buying a candle for his uh, hotel room. Adam, oh, well, I was rooming with Adam as well, so you know what? It actually helped a bit because if you remember the rooms that we were in, you guys had OCD. You had all your oh, shoes my. lined up. You had all your designer <laughs> shirts. No, but like, Ads is full like folding his clothes <laughs> away, and I've just got my clothes everywhere, and he's blowing up at me just every time. Um, <laughs> mate, we had a lot. You know what? I'm going to say Jacob Kraz. <laughs> Kraz. Just, you know, in like <laughs> crazy head noise. Not all there, but just loves footy and I love him, man. Like he just, he's the uh, best. He's the best. He's really in his own ways. But oh. you know what? Like that's, that's okay. Hey, I, I love it. I, that's I, a, I rate it. Like it's, you do your own thing and that's it. I have to say, but if Alex Twal was in that side. Oh my God. 
takes the cake. Him and Karaz together. Oh, game over. Game over. Uh, they're roomies. Can you imagine? Oh, wow. Imagine the chats. <laughs> Hey, you want they're professionals. They're oh, like, I love it. I love it. Like they're, they're two of the greats. They two really the greats. need to like kind of ease. ease mm. No, no, no. They're all right. They're all right. Yeah, they're a good kid. <laughs> <laughs> love your caress. Um, all right. No, so back to my next question. Uh, you obviously played touch growing up. Yeah. You, were you a pretty handy touch player? Um, oh, I was okay. I had a go. I had a go. Oh, please, man. Here we go. I Tell had a go. Humble. You play any reps? Sure, um, you play reps. Yeah, Parramatta, Scorpions and that. But I didn't really play like New South Wales or anything. Okay, like that. fair enough. Well, if you had to pick a dream team of your best five, including yourself, obviously. A dream team? Number one, Benji. Oh, wow, that's a good one. Benji, first one. Sean yeah. Johnson, just from the highlights. 100%. Um, who else? How many are we picking? What's in a team? Six, oh, seven. Is it six or seven? I don't, I don't know. know. I thought it was five. No, that's, that's, no, that's not five. Six or seven. Six. Let's say six, seven. six. We'll go six. six. We'll go with six. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll go Benji Johnson. Yeah. Benji Johnson. We'll go Ponga just because. I have to. Yeah. Um, so we're at four, including yourself. Yeah. We'll go. You need some speed, I reckon. You need some speed. I'm going to pick Clint Gutherson. Gutho? As a lockdown winger. Just why, lockdown. Why Gutho? Just. Just for dog banter. Just dog mentality. Yeah, just he's sick in the head, bro, the bloke. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'll go him get on the wing. Who else can I pick? Speaking of Gutho, where's his hair gone? Oh, he's fried. <laughs> he's heavy drama. He's anyway, the best, bro. Yeah, I love him. He reckons he's looking like Travis Kelsey at the moment. That's oh, what he reckons. Please. Yeah. <laughs> please. Um, anyways, we'll keep going back to the, yeah. the team. Yeah, I go. You got one more. What is that? One, we'll go one more. You need some speed. You need is some it one speed. more or two more? Well, one more for six. Um... Speed, Fox. Yeah, I have to go Foxy. I have to go Foxy. I'm done. Anyway, anyway. Good ne side? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Are you filthy you didn't make it? I'm very filthy. I thought you would have looked after me. <laughs> There's no power game in touch footy, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> There's no yardage carries. <laughs> oh. oh, true or false? True or false? Okay. Yeah, pick for uh, Australia and Lebanon. You're picking Lebanon, true or false? Um, I get picked in both. You can pick for both, but you're choosing Lebanon. True or false? False. So you will pick Australia? I would pick it. I would play for Australia, yes. Why? Um, just ever since I was young and I've always wanted to play for Australia and um, I'm not saying that it's – but like that is the that is the pinnacle of our game. That's the peak of our game. That's If you are playing for Australia, that is the best thing you can do. But mm. in saying that, the times that I've had – Playing for Lebanon is the best best times ever. Yeah, and it's not it's not just because I enjoy playing with those boys. It's I actually get a lot out of playing with. Um, to feeling. Yeah, and it's just a it's a different feel. I, I think it would be a different feeling to playing for Australia, to be honest. And, I feel like it was. Um, yeah, well, the, yeah, speaking from experience, but um, yeah, I've just I've ever since a young kid, man, I've just always wanted to play for Australia, and it's the pinnacle of our game. And um, if I had the, if I had the opportunity or choice, I'd, I'd definitely choose Australia. Well, the Lev fans would love this one. Were you close to the sign for the Bulldogs, true or false? <laughs> That's a curveball. <laughs> um, <laughs> false. Really? False. Are you sure? <laughs> what, what are you trying to get out of me? Wait, I'm just saying. Like, there was a lot of rumours. True rumor. rumour. Oh, you, you know what? And you're very good at listening to rumours, aren't you? How? Just, I don't know. I don't know. Well, listen, I was like, there was just, I had to throw that in there because I had a lot of people wanted to ask that. So anyway. no, that was um, that's false, but mate, okay. Parramatta till I die. Ah, I've got a few more other questions for you. Okay, how many nappies have you changed recently? One. You're taking the piss. You have not just changed one. Are we going to go on this again? I, are we, I want to. I want to nip it in the bud. Yeah. I want to nip it. In, I actually find it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious. But everyone's gone. <laughs> it ran a mile with it, and you've been getting. I think you've getting hammered. You've been getting. Oh, you've been getting. I get hammered. hammered as it is. You think it's different? <laughs> okay, but I've changed one. Okay. Um, yeah, changed one. Who was your idol growing up? Andrew Johns. Why? Um. I actually went for Newcastle for two years just because of him. Really? Like that was how much I loved him. I was obviously half back, five eight, growing oh, up. So, yeah, makes sense. Um, he was the best in our game when I was growing up, and um, yeah, I just I pretty much wanted to play like him, and definitely don't play like him. But mm. um, yeah, that's why. 
So uh, Benny Elias, your uncle, is not, a, uh, not your idol at all. Benny, one of the greats, loved him, looked up to him, but um, Andrew Dons takes it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um, if you had to choose to swap lives with one teammate, who would it be? <laughs> with one teammate? I don't know. Fuck. One teammate. One. I'll just say Gutho. You, what is this bromance? No, he's uh, my mate. He's what my is, mate. He's your mate. He's my mate. Okay, why would you swap lives with him? I don't know. I you like, said before he's off his head. So. You know what? He is off his head, man. And actually, you know what? I don't know if I could do it. He's one of Because he doesn't stop. But saying that he's one of the fittest humans alive. Unbelievable. So that's actually why I probably, maybe I couldn't do it. You'd never be fatigued. I don't know. I'll, I'll go Gutho. Okay. Gutho. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I like that. I'll take that. Uh, going on. With the news, the recent news, obviously with Freddie um, stepping down as New South Wales coach, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's a bit of a surprise for you, but did you feel like he was the right man for the job? Obviously, he coached you. So, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, he's definitely the right man for the job. And, um, I thought that as well. I, yeah. I thought it was a bit weird. I thought, for outside looking in, I felt like he was pushed into the corner almost. Um, mm. If there's one person that lives and breathes New South Wales, it's him. And I, I found that a yeah. bit. I found that a bit bizarre. But what's your thoughts? Man, I got a lot out of Freddie. I mean. My first experience with Freddie was in 17 World Cup when he when he coached me and I got so much out of that. And um, what I learned coming out of that World Cup and taking it into footy land was um, was a lot. And and then I had the the luck I was able to um, play under him in Origin a fair few a few games there. And um, I got a lot out of that, mate. And you know, like you said, he he lives and breathes the Blues, and um, it just didn't work out, I guess, with the last few years. But um, He's definitely the man for the job. I feel like, and uh, we probably we probably let him down. I guess game two, I reckon. Um, like I said earlier, with with some of the some of our game plan, and we didn't really follow it as as well. So, um, well, Turbo going down in the first two minutes, obviously, yeah. it's expanding the works. But you know what? It's Origin, man. You got to you got to yeah, find a way. Adapt, yeah. You know what I mean? It's you know, Queensland doing a fair bit, and you just got to you got to find a way, and you got to get it done. So, um, mate, I, I I get I I can't speak more highly of of Freddie and what he's done for my career and. Um, yeah, I definitely think he is, but obviously it didn't work out with, I think he won in a few more years. So mm, mm. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, same on the coach's topic. Obviously we've been coached by Michael Checker, rugby union, Wallabies, ex Wallabies coach, current uh, Argentina coach. Uh, do you feel like he's got what it takes to coach in the NRL one day? Yeah, um, definitely. I feel like he does. And I think if he puts the, the right people around him and, mm. um, some great assistance, he, he could definitely do it. And, uh, I, I've always said this fair bit. It, I've never seen someone demand the room. Yeah, I agree. The way he demands a room from mm, he's polarizing from everyone, and yeah. just like you're so dialed into what he's speaking about, and and if you're not, it'll boom get you straight back. And um, yeah, I just I got a lot out of just having conversations with him about about leadership, about footy, about um, obviously I was the captain of of Lebanon, so I had a fair few chats with him, and um, just in certain situations what to do and things like that, and. Um, I got a lot out of uh, playing under him, and like I said, I still still speak to him now and and try to catch up with him when he's back. And he's a busy man; he's oh, he's yeah. around the world. So um, you know, whenever he can come back to to Sydney, I I try to catch up with him as much as possible. Well, I feel like the biggest thing he instilled in us was belief. Yeah, like we went into that World Cup. Obviously, we were underdogs. Um, you know, the likes of Samoa, Tonga, New Zealand, England, Australia. But he made us believe that we we're there to win. Yeah, uh, like we had a young team. We had only four or five first graders yeah. of that. And the first game we had off the rank was New Zealand uh, New Zealand Kiwis. And yeah. I felt like, I don't know, I feel like God, looking back at that game, that was a missed opportunity almost. I feel like we were dominating that game so much. And um, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a bit, what do you think? I, I, I definitely feel like we had that game at one point. The, we had him rattled. The that's thing sure. is when you verse, when teams verse us, um, they think they're going to run all over us, I guess. And, um, they come up with a lot more errors, which helps us, and they try to play a bit more expensive, which helps us and keeps us in the game. Yeah, yeah. But we were able to capitalise on a few opportunities that they gave us, and I think it was 18 all with about 20 to go, and, and then they scored two two tries straight away and just you know took the game. I think we had ads, we had ads get get sent off, and um, ads got sent off. Mind you, the guy that hardly ever talks gets gets sent off for dissent. Uh, That'll do me. Doesn't say a word. That'll do me. So that was like, I don't know. And that, that just, I think it was 
18 or at that stage. Yeah. Or 24, 18 maybe, their I, way. It was. Yeah, it was. And then adds, we go for the short kick, we don't get back. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that's just how it happened. Then you got sent off, then the game just got away from us. So, um, but yeah, I mean, when you verse teams like that, they think they're just going to, it's going to be easy. Mm. Um, you've probably played in games like that before and they make, there's a lot of errors, a lot of errors, but you know, we were able to capitalize on our, on those errors and give them a good, good go, I guess. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's just, you know, I think you're speaking about checker, how, how it makes you believe. I I feel like Freddie did the same in 2017. It was the exact same. And, um, yeah, they're both great coaches in their own way. Never know. Might see him coaching in the NRL one day. Maybe. Check. I'm available if you need me. Um, okay. (laughs) Okay, let's talk Dally M's. Uh, who was your pick and uh, was there any surprises for you? My pick was Sean Johnson. No, he was mine too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that would have been a fair fair few. And I think uh, I think what doesn't get spoken about is Nath Cleary. You know he hasn't won one? He hasn't won one, but mm. I feel like he could have easily won three already. Mm. I mean, what people don't realise or forget, I guess, is I think two years ago he was his shoulder. Correct. Shoulder. So he missed out there. He probably would have won it that year. Then the year after suspension, that wasn't allowed to get it. Mm. And then this year, he got injured for that his hamstring. hamstring. Yeah, but and uh, he still come. And he's got he's in a side that's v- like got quality across the park. I feel like he would have won three already. Far out. Do you, do you it's know? Crazy much? to think about it's, that. Yeah, it's crazy. But it's crazy. my pick this year was Sean Johnson. Um, I thought it was unfortunate not to get it. I actually felt. Felt bad for him. I thought he was the best player in the comp all year. I can I can see like two sides. Like I can understand why Kalen won won the daily M. Obviously, the last ten rounds, the unbeaten run, yeah, uh, were so not solely, but he was heavily like he heavily influenced oh, 100%. those games. Uh, but saying that, you got Sean and he's in a side where you had the wing of the year, Dylan Watini's Lesniak. You had Toe Harris, who was a nominee for block of the year. You had um, uh, Sean's Nicole Colkstad, who absolutely killed it. So you had Wade Egan, who, was, yeah. who also was a nominee for Hook of the Year. So you had a he was up against a lot of guys where were pretty much playing their best footy. Yeah, but career career best footy. Yeah. Um. So I think in the end that kind of cost him. If if I'm if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. But I feel like Ponga. Yeah. He his last his last ten games. I mean, it helped that they won every single game. But yeah, he was on fire. And he missed uh, a Jeez, bit of game. Good. Oh, no. he, oh. Yeah, he missed a bit of game time as well, and to come like home like a wet sail. Yeah, oh, to credit to him, I think from the start of the season for how he was playing, he probably wasn't happy with it, and he was very open with how he was playing, and he wasn't happy with how he's played. Sorry. Um, so to finish off the year the way he did and to win the award is, I mean, to credit to him. But um, yeah, I had Sean Johnson. Okay, I've got a couple of envelopes. Okay, one envelope is for our next guest. One envelope is sent from Fox. Okay, I don't know what's in this envelope. There's a um, there's a message in here, so you can read that. That's for you. Uh, it could be anything if it's coming from Fox. Am I reading this now? Yes, please. It's actually a really nice envelope. Mm. Thanks, Cat. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if I should be worried. It is no. It's not about you, mate. So relax. good. That's good. Name one teammate you'd never let babysit your kids and why. Fox doesn't have handwriting like that. You <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a joke. Name one teammate you'd never let babysit your kids and why. Dylan Brown. <laughs> Brown away. Yeah, but Dylan why? Brown just, he's a kid himself. You know what? He, uh, Dylan Brown. Dylan Brown. No, doesn't he have siblings as well? Doesn't he look up? You know what he does? He does. Yeah, so that's. Pro- I don't think. I think that's a bit unfair to Dylan. Yeah, it is actually unfair. I'm gonna take that back. Yourself. <laughs> I'll nominate yourself. <laughs> well, the bloke that's changed one <laughs> nappy, and I'm assuming he doesn't get up late at night to do the uh, late, late feeds as no, well. I, I'm very good. <laughs> um, I don't know. You really don't know? Who? I'm, uh, Bryce Cartwright. No, nah, I would. You've got Regan Campbell Killer. Nah, I would. He's outstanding. Ryan Madison. He'd be good. He's got his own disability. Oh, he looks he after them. He's, he'd be very good. He, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're there's, a lot of, there's a lot of great candidates. Make a Sevo. He's got a kid now. He looks after him very well. He does. He's about to have his second. Okay. 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 You're, you're killing me here. Like, I know. We don't, we don't have all day. No, no, no. And I, I can't. Um, 
Let's just nominate yourself to just to make it easier. Just nominate yourself. I, I, I can't nominate myself. <laughs> no, no, you <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> Answer the question. Just throw I'm someone. I'm gonna go Sean Lane. Sean Lane. He looks a bit different. Sean Lane, no kids, nothing. Um, real like he's like a he's doing a psychology psychologist degree, whatever it is. I don't. Is that really? Even, is that even how you say it? Psychology degree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe maybe it's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go Sean Lane. Let me tell you this. Uh, this chat has really taken a turn. <laughs> Sean um, Lane. Okay, we finally got there in the end. Uh, now you have the opportunity to ask our next guest on the show uh, any question you like. No one needs to know about it until on, uh, until our next guest sees okay. it. Okay. So here you go. I'm actually worried because we spent half an hour trying to figure out who would who'd look after your kids. Um. How's your handwriting? Horrendous. Horrendous. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, don't show me the question. I don't want to see it. Sign at the bottom too, so we know it's authenticated. <laughs> you'll try to you'll figure it out how to spell this word I am. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, true. I've asked two questions here. There's two questions. I asked for one, but anyway, I'll take that. I'll take two. I'll take two. I'll take two. And it's about you, so I'm just tipping you up. Uh, so you can, stress, about, you can stress about that. I, I bet you I know what you asked. <laughs> Was I on time yeah. for the show? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You do my head in. You get, you're, you're here five minutes Oi, early. And, and we're going to get, a, can we get a, a please explain as to why you are late all the time? I just, next, you can do it next next week. When he, when whoever it is coming on gets asked you, you can explain to everyone why you are late to everything. I'm not late to everything. Oh my god! <laughs> Am I that bad? You actually think I'm that bad? You're very bad. I'm pretty bad. I'm pretty bad. You're the worst I, I've I, seen. I, I think I'm just bad with time management. You're the worst I've seen. <laughs> we'll end on that. Oh, uh, we'll end on that. <laughs> okay. All right, let's end on that. Give me that. Back to put it, put it there, put it. Because you, you can look at it. I just told you. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, moving oh, no, on. Like, that's why. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> moving on. Bad handwriting. <laughs> I put it in there. Put it in there. We'll sort it out later. We'll sort it out later. We'll sort it out. Let's drop it on there. <laughs> you do my head in sometimes. <laughs> 2024. What can we see from the Parramatta Eels? Um, I think a different team. I feel like we weren't happy with how we played this year. And... Um, we just need to compete more, I think. Um, be more disciplined on and off the field. I feel like that hurt us this year. And if we can do those things, it'll definitely help our footy. Good answer. I've uh, got no doubt. And uh, lucky last, why don't you unbox oh, yes. our, your little gift from Shoe Grab? Thank you. Courtesy of lucky. Nike as well. Lucky it was Nike. Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah. Nike, Have, look after me. Yeah, sponsors. Oh, yes. Thank you. Let me guess. You've Dunks. got those already. No, I do not have this color, actually. Oh, there you go. How many other colors do you have? I've got 20? A, no. Nike, like I said, Nike look after me and they look after me very well. So they send out a fair few pairs, yes. Well, there you go. Thanks, thank Jay, you. from Shoe Grab. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you for coming on the show, brother. Thank really you, appreciate Josh, it. And uh, why don't we go get a feed now, huh? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's a wrap. <laughs>